Hello and welcome back to the Rex Show podcast. We have Laura Good with us today. She's the co-founder of Startup Sack. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there is a big boom of startup companies in Sacramento. And I, I know that you're more plugged in than I am. Uh, why do you think that is? Yeah. So I've been working in Sacramento startup community for uh, almost for 14 years. So okay. I've seen quite a bit right. happen. And I would say the last five years have been really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, a lot of it is not necessarily because we didn't have startups here before. Sure. But the, there's a lot of support now from other organizations mm -hmm. for um, to have to have Sacramento be a success sure. with startups. And you know some of that is you know getting away from just being a government town and having right. more variety of jobs. Like right. a business identity instead of it used to be. You know when I was growing up here, it was. Uh, it's the capital city and you're close to everything. Right, <laughs> right? Exactly. You're close to Tahoe, you're close to San Francisco. But Sacramento, you know, like before the Sacramento Kings, the identity was, well, it's the state capital. Yes, you know? exactly. And, and so that's kind of changed. And now you have a lot of startup companies going, hey, this is a, a good breeding ground to start up a company, right? Right, you know, and uh, Sacramento has been reworking its identity in a lot of ways. Right. You know, be. We've got sports teams. We've got sure. excellent food. You know the farm right. to fork yeah. capital. Oh yeah, yeah. We true. have a great you know arts and culture yeah. scene. The so, wineries that are in the surrounding areas have really come to the forefront of the front as well. Right. So, yeah. so I, I think we're looking to be a destination city in you know more than just one way, mm -hmm. not just for vacation, but yeah. we want people to move here to raise their families here and to have opportunities for jobs in the technology industry sector, uh, you know, as well as everything else. That we now, which on. industries, uh, as it booms, as the startups boom in Sacramento, seem to be, you know, the majority of startups seem to be what kind of companies? Yeah, you know, it's a real mix, but you definitely have a lot of the kinds of startups that you might see in the Bay Area, right. as far as you know, software as a service, um, you know, enterprise technology platforms, those sorts of things. A lot of tech. Yeah, but we also have some uh, clusters in areas like medical technology, right. um, agricultural technology, clean technology, mm -hmm. and just you know biotech in general. A lot of that springing out of the research that they do at UC Davis and that research being commercialized here and you know, the companies deciding to stay in Sacramento. Right, and with the Sacramento region kind of being a springboard for all these startups, uh, has there ever been a time, uh, you know, in the last 10, 15 years where it, it kind of started to go like this and then kind of flattened out a little bit and now there's another boom or how has that kind of worked yeah, in the past? Yeah, actually there, were, there was kind of a boom right before I got here, I'd okay. say in the er early 2000s. Okay. And you had, you know, HP was here, Intel was oh, here, yeah, and yeah. of course they still are. Sure. Uh, but there were people who were retiring from those companies and mm. starting companies themselves. Right. And so that was kind of how the whole thing got started here in Sacramento was right. after those companies moved here, they attracted talent in that area okay. and then went off to create new things. But then we had the recession in 2008, sure, sure. 2009, and that uh, you know seemed to put a damper on, on a lot sure. of that. But the you know people were still working in their homes, you know, putting startups together. Right. Uh, and you know we have had some really impressive companies since then. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, this year I think there's I think there's three companies going. Uh, going IPO or basically okay. their initial public offering. Yeah, I think I saw, you know, like the Business Journal or something. Right, about right. That, yeah. I mean, one of those is Five Star Bank, which isn't exactly a tech company, right. but they are the bank of a lot of the, the startup businesses here. Yeah, that's what I've seen. They're kind of like in Roseville, Rockland area, is that right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, Origin Materials, right. which is, I think they're in West Sacramento right now, but basically it's an out of Davis kind of thing. Uh, they make plastic out of out of wood chips basically oh, that's wow. oversimplified but right, right. you know it's a non-petroleum based gotcha. plastic bottles so. now do you see the pandemic uh, kind of raising the bar for startups or do you see that kind of like bringing things back to maybe a, a more of a ground level where 
you know, because of the pandemic and, and folks kind of maybe not as much do dollars were in, in the economy yeah. that that ha has that affected startups negatively? Yeah. The, what's more affected startups during the pandemic is whether or not their business model and their customer base was uh, you know, negatively impacted. Like if you were right. starting a restaurant, right. you know, <laughs> right. that could be a problem if you were, sure. you know, anything in the entertainment industry. Right. But it really hasn't stopped mm -hmm. startups. And in fact, some startups have really benefited, I hate to say that, but mm -hmm. from COVID right. um, because what they had to offer is something that people needed. In fact, a um, little program that we have every Wednesday morning called One Million Cups today, one of the presenters has a, a business that helps homeowners and uh, contractors who do you know work mm -hmm. in the home right. connect okay. and that home improvement saw a huge right. boom yeah. during covid yeah. so you know just kind of dependent on what they're doing right. and, and then the other thing that can impact startups is investment capital right yeah that's what and I was that has yeah. not that has not dried up at oh all really during, not even not even during no, the pandemic. there you know there's a lot of uh, Surprisingly, there's a lot of capital out there right now. They, you know, in the beginning, like the first few months of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I would say they were very conservative sure, and looking sure. to save their money and venture capital for their portfolio companies. Right. But actually, there's a lot of investment and in startups going on right now. And if you read the Sacramento Business Journal, you know, at least every week there's a story about like it. Yeah, a yeah. company getting a pretty significant investment. Yeah, it, it sounds like it, or getting a grant or, or something, right. some kind of For influx sure. of cash to mm -hmm. uh, expand. I, I think the thing that's interesting is with startups, I think in the age we live in, we think tech, we think tech, 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 right. it's all tech. But I mean, we've seen some startups in the area that are like a food service or you know, something like that, or maybe a, a transportation service. So there are all kinds of startups that oh, are kind absolutely. of just beginning, right? Yeah. 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 And um, when we first formed Startup SAC, I'd say our focus was more on technology startups. We were looking sure. for companies that uh, would be looking for venture capital and possibly have an exit, uh, meaning, you know, sure. sell their business at, at some point in time, right. you know, very scalable mm -hmm. nationally or globally. But what we've seen since we, we started in 2016 is that the kind of work that we do is helpful to the guy starting a restaurant, you right. know, or, you know, the woman who has a, you know, a fashion line, right. those sorts of things. So, you know, all entrepreneurs need the same kind of support in terms sure. of learning right. what it is they need to have a successful business. Yeah. Now, do you feel with the startups that social media has helped them uh, to a large degree, kind of get the word out about, hey, we're a startup company and this is what we do? Um, you know, each startup has kind of a different strategy around that. I, I would say social media is really helpful if your customer is the consumer. Right, right. And so, uh, and Instagram is what we've seen really right. help with consumer focused products. Oh, that, you know, everyone's yeah. got Facebook. Twitter's out there too, but Twitter has, um, I was an early Twitter user. And, Me too. And Me too. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's changed. You know, a lot, and I'm finding yeah. some startups don't even have a Twitter account. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the thing I noticed a couple of years ago with Twitter, and I was an early user of, of Twitter and social media to promote yeah. my radio show, yeah. is that, oh, uh, let's say when I, let's say eight years ago, five years ago, I felt Twitter was more active in mm -hmm. the sense of what was great about Twitter was the headline services. So yeah. I could say. On the radio show tonight, I got Garth Brooks tickets to give away, and, and I get some good interaction. Right. And lately, I've noticed as we put things up on Twitter, it's like crickets. It, it, it's yeah. like you're putting it up, and you're wondering if there's really anybody, anybody, hello, anybody out there? <laughs> right. Um, where as Instagram, you're seeing an immediate reaction if you mm -hmm. put up a photo or, or a video, as we put up a lot of videos. Um, so I, I think Instagram has kind of taken that thunder. I think Facebook still can have a huge response yeah. depending on who and what you are. And then, uh, you know, there's LinkedIn, which is more business centric. Right, um, right. That can have a huge response yeah. for you as well. Yeah, I've actually seen, uh, you know, LinkedIn used to be kind of a place for your resume. Right. And uh, just over the last few years, it ha you know, it's offering a lot more. And I'm yes. seeing, you know, people do stuff that they used to do on Twitter, right. uh, you know, to connect with business people. So even though, it hasn't always been my favorite platform. Right. I'm using it a lot more these days because that's where the people who need to know what we do are, sure, are sure. hanging out. Yeah, I, I, I feel LinkedIn, I have good and bad feelings about LinkedIn. And my good feelings are, 
you know, it's this business to business kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing, right. right? But the other thing is, is it's at times degenerated into another Facebook <laughs> that happens to be dressed up in a suit, right? Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes I've noticed that LinkedIn obviously is embracing video a little more and those sorts of things, which is good, but sometimes the content that's up there becomes, you know, something about somebody's kid or, or something. <laughs> and which, I mean, we're all proud yeah. of our kids, and yeah. don't get me wrong, but sometimes I just think that it needs more of a business focus to kind of really work if, if you're trying to work it as a business platform. Right, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. I know, uh, I'm not the LinkedIn police, but sometimes right. like if I see people that don't have, I don't want to say a professional photo, I don't think right. you need to go have a headshot taken, but sure. you know, maybe it's uh, them and their dog or them and their right. kid or something. Or them sitting in their car. Yeah, you know? that, yeah. you know, on LinkedIn, I expect more, right. you know, it's, it's kind of your face, you know. Yeah, that. I think it's, you know, that business image and I think it's, you know, I guess depending on what you do, what career you're in, um, yeah. you know, the entertainment industry, it's, that's different than I own a restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, um, so it, it's, you know, different industries are gonna have a different kind of status. Right. Uh, and so depending on what you do and who you're trying to reach, you know, your photo should kind of reflect that reflective personality, I think on that thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know where we've had real success on Facebook? You know, we have a Facebook page, but a couple of years ago, I started a private Facebook group mm -hmm. okay. for, yeah. um, you know, the startup community sure, in Sacramento. Sure. And, you know, people say you only see stuff now, people only see your stuff on your page if you pay, you know, to, to advertise. Right. But in the Facebook group, that's not the case. They'll get right. notified when there's something in there. Cool. And we really, you know, we strive to make it interactive and useful and not a marketplace, right. but a place for founders to connect, ask each sure. other's questions, give yeah. each other support. Education and kind of find out, oh, how did you do this? Or, or what's the best way to... You know, go about getting funding right. maybe or something. Right. Or if there's yourself. something happening in Sacramento right. that could be educational or beneficial right. for startup founders, we'll yeah. post yeah. about it there. Yeah, we found the same with Facebook groups. We use a lot of Facebook groups to promote like restaurants, food, drink, right. uh, drink spots, mm -hmm. and, and let people know kind of about what's going on. And we found that Facebook groups, you know, you can still have members see, you know, your posts where instead of you know, four of your relatives see, exactly. see your post. Exactly. And they love you, they yeah. love you, um, but uh, you're probably not gonna do a lot of business with, you know, grandma and mom and, you know, and, and so uh, Facebook has really locked it down where you do have to pay or figure out some way around that, right. that right. pay for play uh, scenario. Yeah, yeah, and you know, don't completely blame them. At some point you have to monetize. Oh yeah, so. yeah, everybody's gotta make money. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I come from broadcasting, Yeah. and so everybody's gotta make money. Yeah. And so I understand that, and you know it, that's just the way the system works. Mm -hmm. and you either decide to play by that system, or find some way around exactly. it, or you know go. I, you know, I'm I'm not a hugely in favor of this, but I know it's going to be good for my business. Yeah. So if I'm thinking about doing a startup, or I'm already starting my startup, mm -hmm. what's a good way for folks to contact you and, and maybe get some more information? Yeah. So um, first, I recommend that they visit our website, which okay. is startupsac.com, and there's a lot of resources about you know what's available in the Sacramento region. So we we don't just broadcast what we do. Mm -hmm. We look. At, I look at about 60 different websites a week oh, wow. to see what's going on in sure. the Sacramento region. So, uh, you know, that's a great way to start. Also, um, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. We're good. And I can help get you connected. Right. Now, a lot of times people think the only reason they would come to us is because they're looking for money. And, wow. and we don't invest. Right. Um, you know, we do new investors, but there's sure. so much more to learn on the business side. Right. That, you know, it's more than just having a good idea. And so we can help connect people right. with, you know, folks who may have that kind of experience or sure. who um, have a program, a training program that might help. Right. And uh, we are a nonprofit and we don't, you know, we don't charge for that. We don't have like members or right. clients, that okay. sort of thing. So we're funded through. Uh, support from local businesses, nice. and, you know, yeah. sponsorship, and occasionally we'll have an event where we uh, charge a small nominal fee. Okay. Uh, but the real reason for that is because people show up and they have to pay a little bit. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, get a little bit of a commitment. <laughs> exactly. And, and not have a an empty room because everybody just kind of put it on the back burner. So, right. Yeah, we've seen that too. Yeah. You know that 
folks got to have a little bit in the game to, right. you know, kind of have some priority about, right. you know, having that commitment. So, yeah. yeah. I'd also recommend, um, I curate an email that goes out every Monday morning. It's called the Startup Digest. Okay. And if you go to the Startup SAC website on the, on the front page, you scroll down and you can find how to subscribe to the Digest, which is also free. Okay. But it's a roundup of the best events for startups in the okay. Sacramento region. All right. Some great info. Uh, Laura Good with us today, co-founder of Startup SAC. So if you're starting up that business, or even maybe just thinking about it, and that's kind of you know going around in your brain. Uh, it sounds like some great information for folks. You know, yes. Really. So, yeah, well, love to yeah. onboard folks to the startup community, even yeah. if you don't have a startup, but you're just interested in connecting. You right. can do that too. Yeah, and you never know. There might be somebody that you know has, has, is doing that type of business, and you might be able to pick their brain and kind of what's some things that worked for you, what's some things that right. didn't work for you. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's always great when you can kind of find somebody who's kind of already uh, cut a path and can kind of give you some good information. Exactly. So, yeah. We're always looking for mentors as well. Okay. And we can help connect them to entrepreneurs. Well, Laura, I thank you so much for dropping by the thank show. Thank you, Rex. All right. We'll catch you next time on the Rex Show podcast.